Hello and welcome to the Economic Times Security Tech Summit 2022, wherein industry experts share their views on how to manage data security, create awareness around enterprise, cyber and cloud security. In this episode, we bring you an exclusive event highlight. Our first session focuses on discovering the roadmap for a secure nation with Har Kamal Singh Sidhu, National Security Council Secretariat, taking center stage. The topic which has been uh, earmarked for me was the discovering the roadmap for a secure nation. So whatever you want to do, when we want to trade a particular roadmap, first of all, thing which you require is the vision. So in this field, the vision comes from right the first man, the Honorable PM of India, who said, and I quote, I dream of a digital India where the cybersecurity becomes an integral part of the national security. So what is cyberspace? It is any subset or the superset of the interconnected information and communication technology, hardware, software, processes, services, data, and all the systems that are directly dependent on the above for their functionality. So what we are working towards is the national sovereign cyberspace. The way ahead, issuance of the national cybersecurity strategy, it will be issued. It is already under deliberations at its final stage. National Data Governance Framework Policy, the Cybersecurity Act, we have IT Act in India, Cybersecurity Act, then capacity and capability building, training awareness, skill development, testing and certifications, and collaboration. Collaboration is the main thing because if, you re if we really want to trade this road to the success in the cybersecurity of the cyberspace, collaborations are required. Uh, thank you very much. I submit this. Next up, we bring you a keynote address on creating a roadmap for data security awareness, cyber cloud enterprise by N. Subramanian, Senior Director, Corporate R&D, Center for Development for Advanced Computing. What we see today is a whole lot of new communities and new users coming from across the country added into the digital space. How do you go about the roadmap is we need to again look at these perspectives like what are the motivations for us to first inculcate cybersecurity as a culture. Similarly, methods, what you want to do for identifying and protection, systems in place, mechanisms for effective detection, and of course for resilience and recovery. And then accordingly, you have a targeted training and awareness and focused capacity building program revolved around with it and systems in place. The overall roadmap, when you look at it from the nation's perspective, is to look at the coming together of the government, industry, and academia R&D labs, inculcating the competitive spirit to open up challenges and then building innovation, and needless to say about the targeted training, mapping to the roles and responsibilities, what we uh, say about it. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Next, we have an inaugural leaders panel where an experts share their take on top three driving and restraining factors of data protection and awareness. Jasmeet, I'm going to come to you. Your commentary on what the, protection, what the data protection bill will bring in and more importantly, what would be the challenges that organizations may face? First of all, as a country, as organizations, do we really understand what data is? What is data? How does data lead to information? How does information really lead to knowledge? And how eventually that leads to strategy and decision making and opportunities? So I think this is a very critical thing. And if I was to give a very, very basic example, we have DND. Now, all of us, you know, sitting here would have, you know, activated DND and yet we get calls. And what are the penalties? So I think my personal commentary on this data bill would be bringing it with a hammer. It has to come with very, very stronger penalties. So I think, you know, it has to be really, really taken very stringently. Uh, Amrish, right to know, right to be forgotten. Such changes are perhaps major changes in the system definition. How do you see that journey is going to unfold as we go forward? Today, uh, since privacy has come, I started from the Western world, and we realized the value of the data. And sooner or later, every country is coming up with their own privacy act, bill, et cetera. It is going to come here also. So my point is, it has to be thought through. Don't be in hurry. Look at, at holistic picture, because a lot of things are changing in the privacy bill itself. 
and uh, uh, keep track of it. But however, you can do what you, what organizations are doing. What we can do today is uh, do the basic thing: look at where your data is, uh, how you are treating the PII data. Uh, tomorrow, something comes up. How much time you will take to adhere to the guidelines, which might be applicable to you in your industry? Uh, Nina, what could be some of the key security, data security concepts that you would apply in the current scenario? As a CISO, what do you think about, what are your key control points? In insurance, we have lots of data. And this data invariably is shared with different partners yes. over a period. So first and the most important aspect that we need to cover out is to understand where my data is lying. Second aspect is whom they are going to share the data with. Do they have all the requirements that are mentioned in the agreement? Your confidentiality clause, your NDAs, how they are going to share data, if they have subcontracting, all those things were documented. Work from home, obviously uh, exaggerated that piece going out of my network. Users started being in part of network which was not at all secure. Luckily, we had got some solutions which helped me with zero trust, with single sign-on. That was a good aspect. Next up, the spotlight is on redefining ERP security in the cloud age with Abhijit Katkar, partner risk advisory, Deloitte India, taking center stage. For any enterprise, the core of the IT basically stands in their ERPs. And uh, in, in the modern world, as the overall technology and hyperconnectivity is evolving, the ERPs, which was coined as a term in 1970s or 80s, uh, and what shape it offers and or uh, sort of uh, works today is very, very different. And therefore, uh, the security aspects of these ERPs is also, also very different. So what really needs to be secured? Whatever touches or is around the ERP infrastructure, that has to be secured. Now the question is really how to go about. The practical approach that we suggest to the organization is whenever you start your, your cybersecurity strategy journey, as an organization, you should do a security assessment. So that, I think, is a good start. So once you secure those components and, and, and put the tools in place, uh, the journey starts onwards is to keeping a continuous watch as to what is happening, which is really the monitoring phase. And with that thoughts, I, I, I will conclude my presentation. We bring you an intriguing tech leaders panel discussion on technology and innovation in cloud and enterprise security. You know, from your point of view, you have seen the tech transformation. What you believe happened in the last couple of years from a pure transformation perspective in, in the enterprises and in the technology today? I would probably set the context that what has changed uh, you know, the last two, three years. I think most of the people are definitely aware that you know, the pandemic has accelerated the digital transformation. But uh, in the industry like airlines, I think you, will, you would notice that the demand supply has really fluctuated a lot. So you, have, you had to make sure that the applications, the system, the cost had to be resilient or in tune with, the, with your uh, demand uh, and supply situation. Second was while it was happening, then the, you know, it was work from anywhere, right? So how do you make sure that you have got the right uh, you know, tools, technology, protocols in place while your employees are productive, but more importantly, your customers who are actually leveraging your services as an airline, they are able to uh, you know, do the, uh, avail those services. So, so Sri, to over to you. From the information security side of things, what are the challenges you saw when this whole migration of cloud started? So given the reg regulatory landscape and the ever-growing reg regulatory re requirements, uh, you cannot really move, uh, or you could not really move sens sensitive data to, to the cloud. So for, first of all, it starts with kind of dis discovering what you have, uh, what you can afford to move to the cloud, and what should stay on 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 premise or on the tra traditional infrastructures. Apart from that, uh, from a threat lands landscape perspective, uh, I believe uh, for me the top three attacks, if I were to cl classify them, uh, uh, I would primarily start with the, the lack of strong uh, identity and access management controls. Uh, the larger bit again is about security misconfiguration. Security breaches are mostly caused by misconfigurations. Yes, those those have been the 
challenges that we've kind of steadily Im improving on for the past two, three years, and we kind of in in a good place now. But I believe there is yet uh, yet a lot. It's lot. still a journey. Yeah, Priyansh. So you know, from your perspective, when you are dealing with the cloud service providers. Do you think they bring absolute transparency to the client to deal with them and you're very clear that what is the shared responsibility model that they bring in? Initial lot of applications were more of lift and shifts. Now what we realized as a part of the lift and shift of applications, we did not really get the value of the cloud. So those applications have to be rewritten. Re 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 so when we started rewriting some of these applications, we realized that the application architecture has to evolve. You know? So let's say some of it went to SaaS. SaaS was a no-brainer. I think everything is with the service provider. And you manage the accesses. You ensure that uh, they have the right security controls, the SOC 2 reports, and all of it is there. I think the issue lies when it comes to PaaS, platform as a service. right? Because at the end of the day, the cloud service provider, the backend is also running a similar service on the hypervisor. And they give you limited access. So it is very important to build the right framework of things. And that is something that we have been doing. Data analytics is important. And the solution like uh, uh, cybersecurity can play a very major role in that. Because when any threats comes or any data comes, you have to have a bifurcation in between both of them. Is it any threat or is it relevant data for you? So cybersecurity is very important once you do proper analytics or analysis on that. India uh, can play a very major role in that because there are a lot of uh, homegrown application as well as uh, the data analytic players are coming in. But same time, industry leader like us uh, having a robust solution which can help India to grow faster and secure the world accordion. So we have to be proactive, we have to be uh, relevant to the industry so that we can keep ourselves secure and same time to the world also secure on that. So we, we, uh, if I say talk about the key side, we have a solution. We have a solution which can help uh, either on the network side of if you are having a corporate network or even a vehicle outside of that. So we have a solution which can uh, uh, be a uh, uh, automotive uh, security solution which can help industry to be secure on that. India is actually the sixth most breached country in the world today. Having said that, on an average, uh, you know, I think we generate almost around 2.5 quintillion uh, uh, bytes of data on a daily basis. And the belief is that, uh, you know, by 2025, there will be almost around 151 zettabytes of data which will get generated. Now, in order to manage this extent of data, uh, protect this data, store this data, and regulate this data, there has to be some level of technology intervention. Otherwise, humanly, it's really impossible to really understand what to do with this data. Having said so, in terms of uh, you know the frameworks which are being created. I think the focus has been to really look at uh, a very comprehensive enterprise level security protocols for organizations today in order to manage uh, you know the kind of exposures, especially uh, cyber exposures which Indi Indian companies are going through. And there is going to be a huge amount of investments which organizations will do, both in technologies, processes, as well as people. I think uh, it's it's important for uh, us to ensure that uh, we think through a data perspective. Uh, for a long time, uh, you know, we were talking about whether my data is on uh, a laptop, desktop, whether it's on server. From the last few years, we are talking about whether it is on cloud, how it goes. So uh, it is important that all these phases are covered. Uh, many times I see a gap that when people are moving on the cloud, they don't think about, uh, you know, what about the device where the data was already there. So I think the next big thing would be to have solutions which cover the entire portfolio of devices um, uh, through a data perspective. Where is my data flowing into an organization? Which all devices, which all types it has gone to? And based on that, the solution covers everything. And it would apply to all the security products and applications. You need to have products which think through a data perspective and not uh, uh, through uh, maybe just a platform perspective. That's what I feel will grow.